Now the main concern of women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome is fertility. Women want to know if they can get pregnant with PCOS. And the answer is guys and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are already part of the fam thank you so much for coming back i hope you all are doing fantastic for all of you who are new welcome my name is kiara selena i am a practical nurse and on my channel i mainly talk about nursing and health but we also do a bit of beauty hair vlogging and lifestyle so if you are into any of those things make sure you hit on that subscribe button to join our family and turn on your notification bells that way you will be notified whenever i post future content in this video i want to talk about something that a lot of females out there have i've actually had quite a few females reach out to me about this issue and it is pcos otherwise known as polycystic ovarian syndrome so in today's video we're going to touch a little bit about what it is the signs and symptoms the treatments how it's diagnosed and some things that you could do to basically just improve your overall health and maybe kind of um you know regulate your period and all of those things so if you are interested and if you have or suspect that you have pcos make sure you stay till the end of the video because i have a lot of information to share with you before we start there is a keyword that i want us to go over and that keyword is a follicle right you guys are gonna hear me say that a lot in the video and you guys are probably not all gonna be familiar with what a follicle is but it's basically a fluid filled sac in your ovaries that contain fluid right it's fluid filled as well as eggs right so those are the follicles now that we know that it'll be a little bit easier for me to explain so that. at the base of your brain you have this gland called the pituitary gland and that gland sends these two main hormones down to your ovaries so your ovaries contain your lifetime supply of eggs right and these two hormones that the pituitary gland sends down or the two main hormones is lh which stands for luteinizing hormone and fsh which stands for follicle stimulating hormone so these two hormones are sent down to the ovaries right or in the bloodstream actually and and then what the LH is responsible for it is basically going to send signals to these eggs so that they can grow and mature. And then you have the follicle stimulating hormone, right? So once the most mature egg, right, the follicle containing the most mature egg will burst open and that egg will be released into the fallopian tube, right? Where it will sit and it will wait for um, fertilization. So basically that egg is just sitting there waiting for you to get pregnant. If that egg is not fertilized, what will happen is the lining of the uterus as well as that egg will be shed during your menstrual period, right? And then the rest of the eggs will dissolve. So that is how it usually works with a normal, or I don't want to say a normal female because we're all normal fem females, but females who do not have PCOS. Females who have PCOS, it's not necessarily that you're not ovulating, it's that you're not ovulating all the time. And the reason why you have these cysts, which aren't really cysts, they are follicles, which once again is those fluid filled sacs containing the eggs, right? Those, it's not necessarily once again that you're not ovulating because you are ovulating and you do have eggs, but the thing is that your pituitary pituitary gland is sending abnormally high levels of um, LH or FSH, right? And what happens is if one is too high, it'll draw the other one down and the same thing vice versa. Normal levels of LH and you may be thinking, well, if I have too much, isn't that a good thing? But no, the, the FSH and the LH has to be, they have to be right in the middle. They cannot be too high, right? So you are ovulating, but you're not ovulating all the time. And like I said, usually in a female who has a regular cycle, the egg will be re released or the follicle containing the most mature egg will burst open. That egg will be released into the, in the, fallopian tube it will wait for fertilization and if it is not fertilized it will be shed during your menstrual cycle and the other eggs will dissolve but when you have pcos these eggs are not dissolving right so these sacs are staying there these fluid filled sacs are staying there with these immature eggs and that's what causes these cysts right or these um follicles right so when you look at an ultrasound or when you look at an ovary or polycystic ovary you see these little like bumps all around and those are basically Basically just the fluid fill and um, the fluid fill sacs that contain those immature eggs. Signs and symptoms of 
PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the main symptom of PCOS is amenorrhea, right? A lot of females who have PCOS will have abnormal periods or will have um, irregular periods. So you're not gonna get your menstrual cycle or your period every single month like a female who does not have PCOS. You may go three months, six months, or 10 months without having your period. Another symptom is um, abnormal hair growth or unwanted hair growth. You might get um, abnormal hair growth due to high levels of testosterone, which is also a symptom of um, PCOS, right? A lot of females with PCOS will have abnormal levels or abnormally high levels of testosterone, which is a male hormone. And when you have too much of that, it can produce or it can cause you to um, grow unwanted hair. So you'll see some females with PCOS who start growing hair on their chin or, you know, right down here, they'll start, you know, kind of growing a little beard. Another symptom is abnormal levels of sugar. So you might have um, high um, insulin levels and you may also get obesity, right? So those are some of the main symptoms of PCOS, but the most common one for females is amenorrhea or irregular periods. So with these symptoms come some risk factors, right? And because of these, um, this high level of insulin, you can be put at risk of type two diabetes. Um, you can be put at risk of high cholesterol as well as well as like other cardiac issues right so you really want to be careful because that is um, those are some of the risk factors um, not symptoms I'm not saying that everybody's going to you know start having heart attacks and get type 2 type 2 diabetes that is not at all what I'm saying but it is a risk factor right so you want to be careful the main concern of women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome is fertility women want to know if they can get pregnant with PCOS and the answer is absolutely absolutely do you know how many females out there have PCOS didn't even know they had PCOS and ended up having three four five six kids you can definitely get pregnant if you have PCOS now obviously everybody's situation is different but there are a lot of females out there who have gotten pregnant with PCOS without even having to take medications just because you know they just happen to have intercourse when they were ovulating because once again when you have PCOS it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not ovulating at all it's just that you're not ovulating every single month so you can still get pregnant and that's why a lot of doctors will still recommend for you to go on birth control if you are having unprotected sex just to prevent pregnancy if that's not something that you want some of the treatments so if you go to fertility clinic they are definitely going to take your bloods because they are going to want to check your levels for lh or luteinizing hormone as well as fsh and i think they might also want to i'm saying this off the top of my head this is what i remember or what i think i remember from nursing school <laughs> but they will definitely check your lh and your fsh of course because those are the main hormones that once again you know basically stimulate the follicles and the and the uh, eggs right so they're going to check the levels to see if your levels are high and they might also check your testosterone maybe or or your estrogen levels um, but they will definitely do some bloods once they do that um, they can give you some medications um, some FSH medications or a bunch of different hormonal medications that they can try to basically regulate your LH and your FSH um, levels you can also be prescribed metformin or glucophage which is a, an, an anti-diabetic agent which will help with the high levels of insulin if you do have um, high level of insulin and in the worst case scenario you can can also get in vitro treatment um, to basically cause you to get pregnant things that you can start doing on your own if you do not want to take medication obviously I always say medication should be last like or worst case scenario it should be your last resort you should also tr always try natural things before you result or before you try medications that's just my personal opinion I know that there are some doctors out there that will disagree with me but that's just my personal opinion and for the sugar levels right one thing that you can definitely try and that absolutely definitely 1000% works is intermittent fasting right so for those of you who don't know what intermittent fasting is it's basically you give yourself a period of time to eat and after that time you do not consume anything other than fluids that contain no sugar so you can have coffee with no milk no sugar you can have water you can add some lemon to your water you can have any beverages that contain no sugar right um, 
right so you can try intermittent fasting so basically let's say you give yourself you have your breakfast at 10 a.m and you give yourself from 10 a.m to 5 p.m or 10 a.m to 6 p.m to eat you're gonna get all your food in during that period and after 6 p.m you will not be eating anymore until 10 a.m in the morning and that really helps with regulating your insulin levels and you know bringing those sugar levels down if you do have high levels of sugar it will also help you lose water weight and it'll also help you lose some fat right because your first um, your body's first resort for energy is sugar right but if you're bringing those sugar levels down the next thing it's going to have to burn in order to keep you energized is fat so you will see your belly go down you will see that you will start to lose some weight if you do intermittent fasting so that's one thing that you can definitely do to try to regulate your sugar levels and also make sure that you are staying away from sugars um, and that includes fruits um, you can have some fruits but definitely veggies over fruit we all know that it all comes down to exercise and food right you are what you eat so you have to eat properly and if you are on the bigger side exercise even if you're not necessarily um, on the bigger side you should still exercise I really need to be taking my own advice right because I have not been exercising but definitely exercise eat well and intermittent fasting to regulate your um, your sugar level diagnostic testing how do you know if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS um, what the doctor will do is the doctor or either a technician will do an ultrasound it's usually an um, intravaginal ultrasound that will basically go and look at the condition of your ovaries and if you do have polycystic ovaries I'll post a picture up here but you will see that the, there will be little like black holes right on the ultrasound and a lot of doctors say that it looks like a string of pearls but that is how the the doctor will know if you have polycystic ovaries these little holes are actually those follicles those sacs that I was talking about right that do not dissolve and that just stay there on the ovaries and that is what a polycystic ovary looks like on an ultrasound it really gives you guys a better understanding of what polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS is I know that I my teaching can be a little bit iffy but I tried my best so I really hope that it helped you guys understand your condition a little better or not necessarily your condition but I hope it helped you understand PCOS a little better and if any of you have PCOS have any tips or success stories that you guys want to share with us share them down below in the comments I'm sure it'll help the ladies out a lot especially for those who are getting a little bit discouraged share your success stories share your what you know about it you know just share the knowledge down in the comment section below if you liked this video and are not yet part of the family consider joining us by banging on that subscribe button don't forget to like and share and if you want to be notified when I post future content make sure that you hit on that notification bell that way you will get a notification every single time I post I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys in my next one stay safe and much love bye